So, what is the single most ridiculous achievement you can possibly achieve in cycling? An achievement that shows off your range of talent more so than possibly any other. I'd say it's becoming world champion in three separate disciplines at the same time. A feat achieved only once, as far as I'm aware. Mariana Voss has held world titles on the road, in cross and on the track, but she never held them all simultaneously. But what if I told you that there was someone who went one better and successfully managed to hold three world titles at elite level at the same time? And what if I told you that person was just 23 when it happened? Let's talk a little bit about Pauline Ferrand Prevot and a tiny bit about Tabor. Pauline Ferrand Prevot comes from a cycling family. Her uncle, Ludovic Dubot, is a former mountain bike racer who graced the Olympic Games in 2000. The name Dubot might sound very familiar to some people listening. Current French cyclocross champion Joshua Dubot is Ludovic's son and therefore Pauline's nephew. Whilst the Dubots have had a pretty decent level of success, nothing quite measures to the meteoric rise that Ferrand Prevot had. Aged just 17, she'd make her debut in elite cyclocross, narrowly missing the top 10 at the European Championships and impressively finishing 8th during that year's Asen course in Lunhout. Over the course of 2009, she'd win herself numerous junior European titles, including the Road TT title and the Mountain Bike European Championships. In the winter of 2009, her Cross World Championships debut came. She finished 8th as the world's visited Tabor for the first time, the only teenager in the top 10. In her final summer before turning pro, Ferrand Prevot would take both the road and mountain bike junior world titles, something only Nicole Cook had ever done before her. To her latter teenage years, now a professional athlete, she'd continue to impress, taking a top 10 at the Trofeo Alfredo Binda and at La Fleche Wallonne. She'd also finished third at the Elite Cyclocross European Championships and crowned herself as the under-23 Mountain Bike World Cup winner. After signing for Rabobank, she'd claim her first elite national title, becoming French time trial champion in 2012. All this brimming talent truly came to a fall, a mere two years later. 2014 is the year of Pauli Ferrand Prevot. She kicked it off in January by becoming French cyclocross champion for the first time. By April, she added victory in La Fleche Wallonne to that, her biggest road victory at the time. Over the summer, she'd finish second at the Giro d'Orne behind Mariana Voss. She'd also win two elite mountain bike world cups and take four national titles in total. The aforementioned cross title, as well as the titles on the road, time trial and mountain bike. By the end of the road season, there was one more thing left up for grams, an elite rainbow jersey. The cream of the crop in women's cycling descended on Ponferrada in Spain. In a pretty bizarre world championships, a late attack by a group of four, including outgoing world champion Mariana Voss, and at the time still Lizzie Armitstead, inexplicably sat up in the final kilometre. This would allow a group to come back led by the German duo of Claudia Lichtenberg and Lisa Brennauer. Then for some insane reason, the sprint started at some 300 metres from the line, with the likes of Voss herself going way too early and getting swamped. Ferrand Prevot went fairly early herself, starting to fade a little bit right at the death as Brennauer came from absolutely nowhere to come right up alongside her at the finish. After the throw, Ferrand Prevot throws a weak hand up, but you can sense the doubt. An agonising minute later, the result is official. Pauline Ferrand Prevot is the first French road world champion since Laurent Brochard in 1997. Now a world champion, she'd venture straight into her best cross season to date. She was second at the driver cross over Eisen before taking her very first World Cup podium in Hurston Zolder. By 2015, she'd keep the form going, retaining the national cross title and finishing third at Hoge Heide in the final World Cup of the year. Then she would head towards Tabor as the Czech Republic once again hosted the World Championships. Coming into the race, Ferrand Prevot was certainly no outsider, but the race only saw one real favourite. Mariana Voss had won the last six world titles, 
and when you've achieved that, you are quite rightly the lone favourite. Ferrand Prévost was one of the bigger favourites, just outside of Vos, alongside fellow youngster Sonne Kant. In the end, the battle would largely be between those two, Kant and Ferrand Prévost pushing through the snow and the freezing mud at full pelt the whole race, with Vos, Katerina Nash and Nicky Harris never being far behind. They'd also never quite catch up though, and so, even in the final few metres, it would be Kant and Ferrand Prévost fighting it out, and this time it was clear that the French woman had won it, becoming a cross-discipline world champion, an enormous achievement. Throughout early 2015, Pauline would suffer from sciatica, a pain around the leg and lower back. Having had her road season somewhat limited by this, she returned to the mountain bike, doing so with one particular goal, becoming the first person ever to simultaneously hold three different cycling world titles. She'd slowly ramp up the pressure on her rivals, taking first podiums and then victories at that year's mountain bike world cups, before in Val Nord, Austria, it was Ferrand Prévost's do or die moment, and she duly delivered, storming to a third world title, achieving that one single feat that nobody had ever managed to get close to before. Pauline Ferrand Prévost was now the only human ever to successfully wear three different rainbow jerseys simultaneously. Undoubtedly the best cyclist in the world at that very moment, and still probably the most incredible achievement I've ever seen in cycling. Unfortunately, by November of that same year, she'd break her tibial plateau in her knee in a training crash, ruling her out of the cross season. The effects of the injury would linger through to 2016 as well. The Rio Olympics would be a disaster as she failed to finish both the road race and the cross-country mountain bike. After the game, she'd end her season and leave Rabobank for good, signing with Canyon Sram instead, and at Canyon, she'd focus herself fully on the mountain bike, road and cross appearances becoming scarce. Pauline rode a decent cross calendar in 1718, taking numerous top five placings and another national title before being involved in yet another nasty crash, this time coming together with Yolanda Neff in an off-camber descent in Hoge Heide. The crash a week before the World Championships saw Ferran Prevost struggle on the big day in Valkenburg, finishing 24th. After this debacle, she rarely raced cross, a few smaller races in early 2020 is just about it. Meanwhile on the mountain bike, she has become complete royalty. In 2019, she'd make herself cross country and marathon world champion. 12 months later, she'd extend her cross country title. And recently in 2022, she has taken both titles again, as well as the inaugural gravel world championships. The most recent Pauline Ferrand Prévost news, however, is her recent signature to Ineos Grenadiers, becoming the first female athlete on the entire team. Ineos don't have a road women's team at the moment, but they certainly dabble in both cross and mountain bike, and it looks like Ferrand Prévost will be joining Tom Pidcock in dabbling in both for the team. Ferrand Prévost is slated to start the Kuppenberg Cross on the 1st of November, her big goal appears to be becoming European champion in Namur by mid-November. So mark it in your calendars, there is some absolute royalty of the sport returning back to cross this winter. And knowing Ferrand Prévost, there's no real knowledge as to how long she'll be here. So make sure that you watch her while you can, because undoubtedly she'll put on some kind of ridiculous show.